but my next guest has said the sequester cuts, if enacted, will be the first major victory for the Tea Party. And joining us now from Capitol Hill is Congressman Tim Hulskamp, Republican of Kansas. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And I believe congratulations are in an order as you've been awarded a 100% rating by Club for Growth. Heritage for Action for America has called you a sentinel for true conservatism. And the Family Research Council has awarded you the accolade of True Blue Member of Congress. A veritable hat trick. So if you like that sort of thing, congratulations. Well, that's uh, based on my voting record, but I'm just voting what uh, folks in Kansas are, are very concerned about. Absolutely. Now, about a... in, in light of these achievements, what are your thoughts on the imminent sequester cuts that will prove devastating to this nation? Well, a lot of history seems to get lost in Washington very quickly. Uh, these cuts were proposed by the president uh, over 18 months ago as part of the deal to raise the uh, debt ceiling. Congressman, over $2 trillion. Congressman, I, Congressman, I do, I do understand that, and and that's yes, not sir. that's not the question I asked you. Sure. Uh, what I'm asking you is, is it your view that the House Republican Caucus should do absolutely nothing to prevent these cuts? That we should actually hit the deadline and go across it? Is that your view? That's the law. I believe in following the law here. And yes, I think we should have these cuts. Uh, but yes, uh, there were uh, better uh, ways to make those cuts. The House has passed two different bills in the last uh, six months to make those cuts, seven months. Uh, and the Senate has done nothing. The president hadn't made any proposal. But all the president talks about is raising taxes again. He raised taxes a little over a month ago uh, on many Americans. Over 50 percent of American households got a tax increase uh, last month. And uh, now it's time to do the spending cuts. Cut side. Okay. And frankly, out of a $3.8 trillion budget, a 2% cut, I think Washington can live with. Okay. So, so Congressman, you're happy, just so I understand it, you're perfectly happy for 750,000 people to lose their jobs, for 4,000 children in New Jersey not to have vaccination for MMR, uh, for thousands of elderly people in Oklahoma to lose their Meals on Wheels, for Michigan to lose $22 million dollars in funding for primary and secondary education resulting in 300 individuals losing their teaching posts just to be clear you're happy for all of that to happen as opposed to closing a few loopholes that benefit millionaires and billionaires there are billions of dollars of waste in this federal government, the president's uh, cell I'm sorry, phone program, sir. I'm not asking you that question, sir. No, please, no. please. I, I'm asking you this question. I'll repeat the no, question. Yes. Please no, answer no. the question. I, the question. I will answer that. The question, I, I sir, is: Are you happy to see 750,000 Americans lose their jobs, thousands of children not have their vaccinations for MMR? Thousands of elderly people no, not to have a, meals on wheels. That's a false choice. The president is choosing to cut those Sir, children. You know full off well the, the president has no, no control no, president, over what to cut. Well, I'm putting to you, he has no he control. Has he, that these that are choice. indiscriminate cuts, which are part of the sequester. So, so why I'm did repeating. the president propose them? Why did the president propose to make these cuts? The, these yeah. are the cuts the president proposed 18 Sir, months ago. Sir, he I don't offer the Sir, deal. I really don't want to get into an argument with you oh. about whether. Speaker Boehner felt that he got 98% of what he wanted or that 174 Republicans voted for the sequester. We've dealt with those arguments, sir. We could have that all yes, day. Sir. What I'm interested in is are you happy, sir? Are you happy as an elected member of Congress to see 750,000 people lose their jobs, thousands of children go without vaccinations? Are you happy for that to happen? I am not happy for that to happen because Washington can't get his fiscal act together. And the Republicans in the House so have you're not happy. a plan. Oh, sir, I am happy to actually reduce the budget deficit and quit, quit putting burdens of spending today on the backs of future generations. Okay. And most of my folks say, you know what? Washington can make those choices. The president should make proposals to move money around from wasteful programs. We have three and a half million Americans receiving food stamps that are of old enough to work, that have no dependents, but we're still giving them food stamps. Why don't we take that money, Mr. President, and putting it into these programs that he's highlighting? Uh, but on the issue of education, I firmly believe that's not the responsibility of Washington. That's the responsibility of our states and local governments rather than the president of the United States. Okay. Okay, sir, are you satisfied with the Republican leadership since you arrived in the Congress? No, I have. I, I voted for a, a different leader uh, this time around. But what we have happening now is finally what 
I have heard from my constituents is they're looking for some reductions in spending in Washington. That's always difficult. I, I understand. There's always somebody I, I, receiving I understand that, sir. But I just, I, I just, I, 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 Mark, I just want to go Can back. I finish? No, no, no. no you, you want me to answer sir, the question. The answer is, I've seen some improvement. I asked you, I'm asking you a question specifically about the Republican leadership. Now, you, of course, okay. voted <clears throat> against the Ryan budget. Is that correct, sir? Uh, I voted against it uh, in 2012. I voted for it in 2011. Okay. But the reason I voted against it in 2012 was uh, because we weren't moving quickly enough to solve our overspending problem. Absolutely. And, uh, and but, so, uh, but our, yeah. and so, and so, uh, was it not big enough in your opinion? I mean, the 2012 Ryan budget slashed 45% of education, 24% of infrastructure, Medicare by 34%, which would force 45 million people to lose their health insurance. Uh, something like 133 billion would have been taken away from food stamps, the supplemental, supplemental nutrition assistance. Was Paul Ryan's budget not brutal enough for you, sir? That's what I'm asking. Well, it's not a matter of brutal, but uh, no, there are different ways to help balance the budget. So you uh, would have liked year, more cuts? Cuts in different areas, actually, and we have had a plan through the House. The Senate has yet to have a plan, and, and that's uh, their choice, but to stand up today and say, my gosh, we haven't seen anything in the House is not true. That's happened twice in the last year, uh, in May and in December. Okay. Yeah, but the, the question is, when do you want to balance the budget? The President doesn't want to balance the budget. I want to balance it in a way, and as quickly as we can, before we have too much debt in this country. Mr. Mr. Martin, Hughes I think you understand Hughes the Camp, problem with you, too much debt. As, as you know full well, the President does does want to balance the budget Absolutely and not. he that seeks to do it Martin with a balance all. of revenues his, and his cuts. His budget okay. last year didn't balance okay. for 75 years. It didn't balance for 75 years. Okay. How can you say he wanted a balanced budget? Well, because that is what the president has said. But let's move on if I let's move on if let's move on if we may with your own record sir for a moment. Um, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, now 130 people lost their lives. 62 mm -hmm. billion dollars in damage. 72,000 homes destroyed in New Jersey alone, and you voted against Hurricane Sandy relief. And I'm yes. quoting you, sir. You were quoted as saying, I'm not convinced that it was needed. What would have satisfied your threshold of need, sir? Would it have been 500 dead, 1,000 dead, 5,000 dead? What is it that satisfies Mark, your how, how expectation how of deaths okay. that means that you would have voted for relief for the millions of people affected by Hurricane Sandy. Hey, Martin, some of that money wasn't going to be spent for five years. What happens in Washington, D.C. is they say you got to authorize it today because it's an emergency when most of that money wasn't going to be spent for two, three, sometimes four years. I understand that, sir, but you said you were not point, convinced position, that it was needed. You were not convinced uh, that it was needed. Oh, uh, I'm asking you the question. As of today, as of today, threshold of, FEMA still has threshold, money left to spend today. What threshold of deaths, how many deaths do you need? You know it's not about deaths. Well, uh, well there were a hundred. Spending the money didn't bring anybody back to life. You know that, Martin. But the question is, do we borrow that money Okay. from the future and spend it today. All okay. I said, and conservatives said, is if you want to spend that money, find a way to make cuts in our current programs. You so, can't continue to borrow money every single day like you want to do, apparently, no, and that's the President not, of the United sir, States wants sir, to. How I'm would not, you like to pay for sir, your $55 billion, sir, Mr. Sir, Bashir? Sir, Did you want to pay for that or not? Sir, I, 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 and you're I, telling me sir, that you want to borrow the money me. from children and yeah. grandchildren and force it's, it's, them it's, sir, to fund, please, fund your spending. Please don't impose um, decisions on myself. I have no powers, well, as you know. please don't do the but, same to me, I, Martin, as well. well. That, well because that was, what you that just was what said you was said. imposing on me you that said somehow you were not the convinced deaths were it was related needed. to that. You said it was what not I was, okay. Absolutely. Can, can and you, you know explain what, you know what to the me, balance was it in, the light, in, in the light of what you just said, sir, can you explain to me why you voted in favour of $380 million in agriculture disaster aid? Has that got anything to do with the fact that you come from a farming family? Why did you vote for that? That had to do with my district. And you know what we did, which is different than uh, Sandy, is we actually cut somewhere else in the budget. And that's what we're proposing here. If you want to raise spending in one place, at least cut it somewhere else. But, sir, and so get your Hurricane facts straight. Sandy we cut was a once-in-a-lifetime event. That's what yes. the federal government exists to respond. It was a no, once-in-a-lifetime event. That's nowhere in the Constitution. Why the federal you, government exists why do you, to, for national Why defense. do you vote for agriculture disaster aid, but you will not vote 
for that bill in the did House you not hear my last that provided answer? relief. Mr. Bashir, let, would you, did, you missed my answer. What I said was Please. this. I actually voted to cut spending at another ag program and moved it over here. It wasn't new spending like you're proposing to do for Sandy. And in Sandy, we found out FEMA still had money until February, maybe March, that they hadn't spent yet. And they weren't going to spend this money that was given to them for two, three, or four years. All I'm saying is sometime, someday, and the day is actually going to be Friday morning, we're going to wake up and actually find out maybe we're going to cut a little spending in Washington. Two percent's not much of a cut. And But the president wants to cut particular programs that are painful. Why doesn't he start with his free cell phone program? 2.2 billion. But no, he won't cut that. But he should do that. It's his responsibility to make certain these funds are used in the best way possible. Congressman Tim Hulskamp, thank you very much for a robust discussion this afternoon. Absolutely. And I do hope, sir, that you'll join us again in the very near future. Thank you, Martin. Appreciate thank it. you, sir. Thank you.